What's up YouTube, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to take a look at another lead code SQL interview question, part of SQL 50, let's get into it. So this one's called employees whose manager left the company. It's part of SQL 50, which is lead code study plan of 50 SQL questions to get started with. Now this one's, this one, 1978, is part of the subqueries section. So we're probably gonna to have to use a subquery here and that's a good technique to know actually. So in terms of the data, we have a table called employees, which has a employee ID, name, manager ID, and salary. Our task is to find the IDs of the employees whose salary is strictly less than $30,000 and whose manager left the company. When a manager leaves the company, their information is deleted from the employees table, but the reports still have their manager ID set to the manager that left should return the result table ordered by employee ID and the result format is in the following example. For this example input, the output would be employee ID 11. Let's check 11. So employee ID 11 has a manager ID 6 and manager ID 6, so employee ID 6, since the manager is also an employee. Manager ID 6, employee ID 6 does not show up in the employees table. So this person doesn't exist anymore, which means they have left the company. I think there's more information here. Exactly. Some employees do not have a manager ID, which means manager ID is null. So if there's null in here, that doesn't mean the manager left the company. That means they didn't have a manager to begin with. That's how they're using that table. It might not be the optimal way to do it, but that's how it works. And that's what we're gonna to have to work with. This one's marked as easy. It might be considered medium by some people, but yeah, definitely not entirely trivial. Let's get into it. So I'm gonna use my SQL here and select employee ID, since that's really the only field we need to output. And yeah, it's a good start actually. So we're going to select from employees and let's check the conditions again. Their salary should be strictly less than 30,000, which you can add as a word filter here. Salary be less than, strictly less than, so the symbol with no equal sign, strictly less than 30,000 and yeah, now the big part is really finding a way to filter by employees that don't have a manager. Now, the thing we just did with the example data, that's actually what I want to replicate here exactly. So we took this example of employee ID 11, which has manager ID 6, and 6 doesn't show up in this list of employee IDs. So we're gonna say, manager ID does not show up in this list. So we're gonna say manager ID not in, which yeah, is a keyword, basically saying, I'm gonna provide a list here and I want manager ID not to be in there. If I just had in, it would be manager ID has to be in this list, not in, means it shouldn't be in the list. I think you might even be able to use an exclamation mark to say not here, but not in reads better in my opinion. So in order to get the list of employee IDs, I'm just gonna select star, or actually select employee ID from the employees table. In order to do the comparison of manager ID, to this list. The list can only have a single column, a single field. So in this case, employee ID, because otherwise you wouldn't know which column to compare it to. And it needs to be in, th in the same format or the comparison needs to work. So these are two, uh, both integer fields, the two uh, integer fields. And yeah, they have the same content in there in terms of being an employee ID. Manager ID is also an employee ID. So 
yeah, we can do that. We might even be able to say distinct in case of having du uh, duplicates in there. But the way the table is set up, it doesn't seem to be the case. So yeah, I'd say it's optional and let's try to run that, see what it gives us. Only selecting an employee ID. We have that strictly less than 30K in there and we have this notion of the manager not being an employee, which means they have left the company, they've quit. So this seems to be all right, but there's one more thing missing. Return the result table ordered by employee ID. So I'm going to add this clause saying order by employee ID and fair enough. So that's a very simple thing. Question often tells you exactly what to do. You just need to actually make sure you read the question carefully. So I always recommend going through all the conditions when you're first reading it, maybe even taking notes in your output and then going over it again before you state that this is your final solution in the interview. And you, be, you need to be very meticulous in terms of just including it should be strictly less than 30K, not just 30K or less and all that. But yeah, it's just good practice to do that always, I guess. So it doesn't say whether we should order by employee ID in ascending or descending order. So that's another way to be specific. But in this case, since it's not specified, I'm just gonna write it out as such and it's gonna order in ascending order. So lower employee IDs first. So if we submit that, it should actually make a difference because I think there are other test cases which have multiple employee IDs and then the ordering has to, has to be correct. So this one's accepted. That's gonna be it for this question pretty much. It uses a subquery, but in a very minimal way. You could probably also do this using a left join, so you left join based on manager ID and employee ID. And then if manager ID doesn't have a match matching employee ID, that means they're no longer at the table. You're gonna have null values for employee ID. And then you're gonna filter on employee ID being null of the table that you kind of have the left join with if you're following. So if you usually do this often, if you're using a subquery to filter, oftentimes you could also left join that instead. But yeah, that's gonna be it for this question. I think it's a good one to, to start with and I, it makes sense to include it in SQL 50. If you wanna give this one a try, it's available for free. I currently don't have a premium subscription even. So give this one a try. Um, check out the other videos in the Lead Code SQL 50 playlist. And if you've already exhausted Lead Code, I can always recommend you to check out Strata Scratch, which is a platform that I'm using often to prepare for interviews and to just practice my skills, which is specifically for data scientists and data analysts. It only has SQL, Python, and R questions. You can, um, you can solve questions with any of these languages and specifically for data questions. So give this one a try. I'm gonna have a link in the description down below to this question and to Strata Scratch. And apart from that, I'll see you in another video. Bye.